Welcome to Daily Wisdom, Walking the Path with the Buddha, a podcast shared by David Roylance. This podcast is dedicated to guiding you to completely eliminate the discontent mind and the suffering it causes by attaining enlightenment. Learn and practice the teachings of Gotama Buddha that will guide you to fully attain a peaceful, calm, serene, and content mind with joy. To support this podcast, visit patreon.com forward slash support Buddha or visit buddhadailywisdom.com where you will discover a full range of courses, retreats, and online learning resources to assist you on the path to enlightenment. Now, here's our teacher to share more. สวัสดีครับ Hello and welcome to Daily Wisdom, Walking the Path with the Buddha. Today is our day to get together for meditation. It's part of our group learning program where on Sundays we get together and we talk about a chapter in this book, and I share teachings with you to help you walk through this book over a seven-month program called the Group Learning Program. That's restarting on January 8th from the very beginning, so you're welcome to join on Sunday at 9 p.m. Thai time. You can either join on Facebook, YouTube, in Zoom, and there's some other places that we live stream as well, or you can watch the playback or the replay because on Sundays we go through that book chapter by chapter, and then on Wednesdays we get together in order to share teachings. On the path to enlightenment through meditation, so that you can learn breathing mindfulness meditation, loving kindness meditation, and we even do Buddhist chanting as part of that as well. We're coming to the close of our group learning program here, and we've just finished up our retreat series, Harmony and Relationships. So we're going to be restarting the whole program from the very beginning on Sunday, January 8th. So today we're doing loving kindness meditation together, which we start with chanting to kind of ease into meditation. Then we do breathing mindfulness meditation just for kind of a short period, a few minutes to kind of prepare the mind for the loving kindness meditation. Then I'll guide you guys in the loving kindness meditation part, and then we'll go back to breathing mindfulness meditation, and then come out with some chanting. So the way that we do this loving kindness meditation is right in the middle of all of that that I just described, and I'll be guiding you through all of this. We'll be doing affirmations where we'll make these rings, and we'll start with "I." May I be peaceful. And when you hear me say that in the mind, you repeat that affirmation on the out breath whenever you get to your next out breath. So you don't need to match exactly to my breath, but I'm going to be guiding you, and you'll hear me say these statements. And then on your out breath, you'll be able to say in the mind, "May I be peaceful." And then there'll be additional. Affirmations: May I be safe. May I be well. May I be free of all discontentedness and the suffering it causes. After those four affirmations for I, then we will move to the next ring, whatever that is, and we'll go through all these rings until we get to all beings, and we'll go all four statements all the way through each of these individual rings. And what you're doing is you're transforming the mind away from anger, hatred, and ill will, and towards loving kindness or this active goodwill, this genuine interest in seeing all beings be well. So that then, by filling up the mind with loving kindness and meditation in your daily life, you can practice through your intention, speech, and actions to also have loving kindness, where you can be polite, kind, friendly, and respectful to all beings. This is what's going to transform the mind. All the work that you're doing on the path to enlightenment is for your mind. It's not to actually change other people or change the world. Instead, what you're doing is you're working on transforming your own mind, and by cultivating wisdom about the pollutions that are in the mind, and then eradicating those pollutions, now you can function in daily life through the natural laws of existence. Namely, the natural law of gamma of cause and effect, and action and result. And now, as you interact in the world, you'll be interacting in a more peaceful, harmonious way. You'll experience this blossoming of your personal and professional relationships because you're no longer functioning through anger, hatred, or ill will. 
And as you're transforming the mind through this meditation and through the Eightfold Path and all the other teachings that the Buddha shares, you're going to experience periods of being annoyed or irritated or frustrated or other discontent feelings like this. But over time of training the mind, you'll see this gradual declining of feelings like anger, sadness, frustration, irritation, annoyance, guilt, shame, fear, boredom, loneliness, shyness, resentment, jealousy, all of these feelings and others are gradually diminished in the mind. As you're removing more and more of the pollution of the mind, you'll see this brightness and this radiance come through where you'll experience more peace, calm, serenity, and contentedness with joy. And eventually, once you eliminate all the pollutions of mind, then these mental qualities will be permanent. The mind will always be peaceful, calm, serenely content with joy. There's even this focus and this clarity, this concentration and deep memory that comes into the mind as you're getting rid of the pollution that's plaguing the mind. Now the mind can perform optimally. So it is the Eightfold Path that is guiding you to that. And meditation, specifically loving kindness meditation, is one aspect of that path. So we come together to encourage, support, and motivate each other in our meditation practice. So thank you for joining. I appreciate that you're here and interested in learning the teachings of the Buddha. I would like to invite you to join for meditation. And then after the meditation, I'll open up to any questions that you guys have related to the path to enlightenment as part of our Wednesday class. So you might decide that you'd like to take a seated position, a lying position, or a standing position. These are three positions that are conducive to loving kindness meditation. Oftentimes in an online class, it's the seated position that people will oftentimes choose. So you might be seated on the floor with a cushion under your rear, or you might be in a chair with your feet flat on the floor or cross at the ankles. It's up to you. There's not just one fixed way to position the body in order to meditate. If you're on the floor, you might just lightly cross your legs, not having them too tight because you would like to keep the circulation flowing through the legs. The hands and the arms, you put your right hand over the left with the thumbs together. This is the way that the Buddha would do that and put it in the lap. Or there's other options too, because as I mentioned, there's not just one way to actually position the body. You can put your palms on your thighs, your knees, you can put your palms up. If you're in a chair with armrest, you might even have your arms on the armrest of the chair. The upper body should be erect. This keeps the mind attentive and alert during the meditation, where if the body was slouched or if it was real rigid, it wouldn't promote the qualities of mind that you're looking for during your meditation. This is a dedicated, active, purposeful training session where you're either eliminating certain unwholesome qualities and you're cultivating certain wholesome qualities. So you're actually doing work during the meditation. So you would like the mind to be attentive and alert during the meditation. And the way that the Buddha taught to accomplish that is get the body nice and erect and nice and straight, but not real rigid and not slouched in the middle. Next, you would like to just close the eyes and start breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. Here at the beginning of the meditation, you're just establishing the breath. You're breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. You're welcome to stay here with the breath and I'll be back with some guidance on meditation. Or if you know the chance, you're welcome to chant along. And then as I mentioned, I'll be back with some guidance after the chanting. Hortang Mahaka Wanang Apiwa Teomi Sawaka To Mahaka Wata Tamu Damang Namasami 
Supatipano Mahakavato Sāvaka Sāngkho Sāngkhāng Namāmi Nāpmo Rāsā Bhākavato Arato Sama Saputasa Napmo Rasa Pakavato Arato Sama Saputasa Napmo Rasa Pakavato Arato Sama Saputasa Iti piso makwa arahang sama samoto wicca cara nang samono sakato roka wito Anu tero purisa Dhamma sati sata tawa manu sanang Puto pakewati You should just be breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. Here you're just establishing the breath, a nice, natural, steady, consistent breath, breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. Your breath isn't going to match up to the guidance that I'm providing. This is your practice. I'm just here as a guide. So whenever you get to the next inhale, breathe in gradually through the nose, experiencing the full breath. And then whenever you get to it, take a nice gradual exhale through the nose. Breathing in and out. Breathing in and out. With the breath well established, Start fixating the mind on the sound of the breath or the sensation of air moving into the nose. The breath is the present moment. Fixate the mind on the breath, the present moment. Breathing in and out. Breathing in and out. With the mind fixated on the breath, whenever you observe that the mind is off the breath, cut that off, let it go. Come back to the breath, the present moment. No need to judge the thought analyze it, label it, observe it, or even try to figure out where it's coming from. Just wherever you observe that the mind is off the breath, cut that off, let it go. 
and come back to the breath, the present moment. I'm going to be quiet now and let you do this work of focusing on the breath. You have nowhere to go. There's nothing to do. No one needs you right now. This is your time to focus on the breath. Breathing in. In, out.
continuing to focus on the breath. On the out-breath, repeat these affirmations in the mind. May I be peaceful. May I be safe. May I be well. May I be free of all discontentedness and the suffering it causes. May we be peaceful. May we be safe. May we be well. May we be free of all discontentedness and the suffering it causes. May my family be peaceful. May they be safe. May they be well. May 
may they be free of all discontentedness in the suffering it causes. May my friends and co-workers be peaceful. May they be safe. May they be well. May they be free of all discontentedness in the suffering it causes. May all those who I come into contact with today be peaceful. May they be safe. May they be well. May they be free of all discontentedness in the suffering it causes. May all those who I will not be in contact with today, wherever they reside, be peaceful. May they be safe.
May they be well. May they be free of all discontentedness and the suffering it causes. Now return back to breathing mindfulness meditation, focusing on the breath, cutting off any time the mind moves off the breath, breathing in and out.
to slowly make your way out of meditation. What I'll do is just open up to any questions that you guys have related to anything on the path to enlightenment. You're welcome to ask questions in Facebook, YouTube, or Zoom. Or in Zoom, you can electronically raise your hand and ask any questions that you like. These can be questions about meditation, about the Eightfold Path, the Four Noble Truths, the Three Universal Truths, the Five Precepts, the Natural Law of Gamma, the Three Poisons, anything that we've taught in the retreat series, Harmony and Relationships, really anything and everything is just open, freeform questions. So feel free to let me know if you guys have any questions for today. Yes, sir. On Facebook, I think, I mean, I might still be typing out her question. Um, she's asking a question about the pace of the affirmations, sir. Okay. Is she wondering what the pace should be? I think so, sir. She might have to follow up with the rest of her question. Okay. Uh, here we are. Uh, the pace was nice and slow, which made the mind realize that I am doing it too quickly. Therefore, is there a connection between the meditation pace and the pace of life? Should we slow down our affirmations pace to slow down our lives? So remember, there isn't just one way to do this, right? There's multiple ways and everybody is going to do things a bit different. For me, I've come to this really slow way based on the breathing that I do. So in breathing mindfulness meditation, I needed to train the mind to slow down. So I slowed the breath down. And that's what slowed the mind down because the mind is fixated on the breath. So by training your mind and breathing mindfulness meditation to slow the breath down and slow the mind down, now when you're doing loving kindness meditation, I'm taking a deep breath in. And then on the exhale, I'm doing a affirmation. And then I'm taking another breath in. 
And then on the exhale, I'm doing an affirmation and then I'm breathing in. And it's probably even a little bit faster than what would be normal because when I speak, I'm releasing a certain amount of air. So even though this might feel slow to you, this is the pace that I would use in meditation. And it's probably a little bit faster because I'm losing a little bit of air there. And then in between rings, I'm going through a full breath cycle before I I restart. So on that last affirmation, may I be free of all discontentedness and the suffering it may cause. That's on the out breath. And then I'm taking an inhale and then I'm going exhale and then I'm doing inhale again. And then I'm doing the next affirmation so that there's lots of space there in between each individual ring so that you can really soak the mind into the loving kindness for each individual ring. So you can do this on whatever breath cycle that you have, because remember, there's not just one way to do this. But what you should notice is that in breathing mindfulness meditation, you should be slowing the mind down. And oftentimes we think that slow is bad, right? In modern society, we think quick, fast is best, but it's not. Because if the mind's moving really, really fast and really, really rapidly, it can't necessarily bring forth all its wisdom in daily life to make whatever decisions need to be made. So it's very important to slow things down. And depending on the culture that someone lives in, I don't know how Italy is, but if it's anything like other Western cultures, it might be a bit fast, a bit rapid, where here in Thailand, things move very, very slow. And this is actually really helpful when you're driving, when you're walking, when you're talking. We're not being slow just to be slow, but things just move at a consistent pace because if things are moving really, 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 really fast and rapidly, there tends to be a lot of haphazard decisions that are being made. So even in traffic in Thailand, you know, if you're changing lanes, there's not these rapid changes because, you know, there's motorbikes, there's bicycles, there's all these different beings using different modes of transportation that we need to look out for. So everybody moves at a very consistent, steady pace. So you would like to slow the mind down because then in daily life, when you're talking, you can be very focused, you can be very concentrated. When there's a decision to be made, you can think it through methodically and with some consistency rather than just go, 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 go and a lot of rapidness. So if your speech is rapid, it means that the mind is moving really fast. So I've noticed over the years of practicing these teachings that the consistency of in the pace of my voice has slowed down because I need to make sure students really understand what I say. So I speak at a certain consistency, certain pace, but also the mind has slowed down because again, remember, we usually think fast is good, but fast is not necessarily good for a computer. Yeah. Fast is helpful, right? But for the human mind, fast is not good. So by slowing the mind down and breathing mindfulness meditation, then in loving kindness meditation, you should be able to have this nice, consistent, steady pace to your meditation and to your affirmations. But remember, there's not just one way to do this. What you're experiencing when I guide you is the way that I would do it. But that's just through the years of training that I've done with the mind. Yes, thank you, sir. And then... I know you've taught about this before, but just for further clarification, are we only focusing on other people as these beings, or can this be maybe animals, insects, and can we, should we um, do loving kindness meditation in regards to maybe people who have passed on? Yeah, you can do loving kindness meditation for all these different beings. It really depends on how you would like to structure your meditation. Since I'm leading a meditation, I tend to do these more generic rings because that applies to everybody. But each individual practitioner should customize their meditation based on the challenges and struggles that they have at any one particular time. So if you know that there's anger, hatred, ill will, of course, you need to include those individuals and you may even call them out by name if there are certain individuals. But even if you have irritation or annoyance or the slightest dislike towards certain beings, then you should include them. So if it's human beings that are alive today, if it's people that have passed away, if it's animals or other beings, you can include any and all beings that you'd like. You know, some people, if they're 
having hatred towards any particular being, maybe even God, because I teach about this in chapter 18 of this book. Some people, if they have hatred or anger towards this being, that's going to hinder you from attaining enlightenment. Any hatred or anger, even the slightest dislike or annoyance or irritation for any beings whatsoever, whether it's a spider, an ant, a cockroach, a a snake, or any of these beings, if your mind has any kind of ill will or hatred towards any beings at all, it's going to hinder your enlightenment because there's still that mental object of ill will. There's still that fetter, that taint, that pollution of ill will is still in there. It hasn't been obliterated at the stump the way that the Buddha teaches. So we're uprooting that anger, hatred, and ill will and all those lesser versions and we're bringing in the loving kindness so that now you can function in a way that's loving and kind. And then not only are you training the mind, but then your intention, speech, and actions as well. So if you're cultivating loving kindness for mosquitoes, because perhaps you have this anger anytime a mosquito is around, well, okay, maybe you're doing that in meditation, but then in daily life, when mosquitoes are around, instead of, you know, splat, it might be, you know, blowing them off of you or just a little flick of the fingers to get them off. So you're taking that meditation and what you've cultivated in the mind for loving kindness for a mosquito, and you're now bringing that into your intentions, your speech, and your actions. You might even be like, okay, little girl, okay, little guy, you know, see you later, you know, go on. (sighs) You know, you're trying to cultivate this loving kindness in the mind so that you don't have any hatred or those lesser versions for any beings whatsoever, because that's going to hinder you from being able to now function through loving kindness. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. And then on YouTube, The Middle Way asks, due to my vocal cord being paralyzed, my breathing is so short compared to you. The affirmation's words is longer than my breath. Please advise what to do. Yeah, so you're not going to be speaking, you know, the affirmations. It's all in the mind. So if you're breathing in and then you're breathing out and the affirmation is longer than your out breath, just continue the affirmation on the in breath as well. So each human body is going to be different. So that length of breath is going to be different for each person. But start it with the out breath. And then if you need to go to an inhale, as you're not yet done with the affirmation, just continue the affirmation on the inhale as well. Yes, thank you, sir. Uh, They follow up with, in my practice, I kind of force the breath to breathe longer and breathe heavier so I can hear the sound of my breathing. That's fine to kind of get started. You're you're not interested in forcing it, you know, long term. But if that's what you need to kind of get clued in, oftentimes when there's pollution in the mind, it's kind of hard to hear sometimes. Like I went through periods of time like this. You might even have blurry vision at different times because the mind and the brain are, are so involved in hearing and sight and smell and all of these different senses so you can see your senses go to a heightened state where they're kind of oversensitive and you can go to periods of time where they're kind of muted the buddha actually talks about this in his teachings so as you observe that if you're having challenges hearing the breath and you need to exaggerate it in order to kind of catch it and then you can kind of start fading it out a little bit where you're not feeling like you have to force or control the breath but you're developing this natural awareness of the breath then that's what you would ultimately like to get to but you might have to go through these periods of time where you're doing intentional things to really focus in on the breath you may even decide to do some breath training outside of meditation where you're just sitting somewhere with your eyes open and just kind of focusing on the breath and getting the breath to be more natural. I did this for a while to help the meditation because in meditation, you're putting everything together. You're putting together the body positioning. You're putting together the breath. You're putting together the fixating the mind on the breath. You're putting together the cutting off and letting go as you observe thoughts and all these different things. So it's a lot of things coming together, even though it's a very simple meditation to describe, there's a lot of things that are happening. So whenever there's a lot of things that are going on and you're having challenges with any one piece of that, whether it's meditation or anything else in life, you can kind of carve that thing out and just focus on that. So if it's the breath that you're challenged with, you can just carve that out, sit somewhere in a chair or at a park or on your bed or whatever, and 
just don't try to do anything with the mind other than focus it on the breath. Don't try to do anything other than to listen and hear the breath. And then do that for five, 10 minutes over multiple sessions until you got it. And then when you start bringing that all together in meditation, it'll all fit together more nicely because you've done this other training outside of meditation. Yes, wonderful. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Um, They also say, during practice, I get distracted with my thoughts that this is so good, I should send the link of this practice to my friend, then I send the link to three people, then come back to meditation. Please advise, sir. Yeah, this is craving, right? The mind is is holding on to the world. Uh, You haven't let go of craving in regard to the world. This is what the Buddha explains. So this is why my guidance, when I do breathing mindfulness meditation, I say, you have nowhere to go. There's nothing to do. Nobody needs you right now. This is your time, right? Because you need to get used to that of letting go of the world. And this is your time to the point where your mind is so peaceful in meditation that if you died in that moment, you'd be completely fine with that. Not that you're aspiring for that, not that you would like that to occur, but if it occurred while you were meditating, there's nothing else that the mind's holding on to. So the mind's still holding on and attached to the world and to these friends or family, whoever it is, and you should cut that off. So when that thought of, I want to send this link to people, cut that off and let it go and just come back to your meditation, come back to your meditation, come back to your meditation. If you would like to send it to them, send it to them after class. But during the meditation, cut that off and let it go. And then if you are sending links to people about these teachings, if you did that excessively, that's also craving. So if you send a link, you know, one, two, three times to somebody, okay, that's enough, you know, let it go. If they would like to pursue training in the teachings of the Buddha, they will. If they're not interested in that, then they won't do that. But if you have craving, you might be sending six, eight, 10, 12, 15, 18, 20 different links to them. And this is from your own craving. So you need to cut that off, not only in meditation, but outside of meditation, if you're noticing this urge, this obsession, this longing, this yearning for others to practice these teachings, that's because of the craving. And you need to train the mind to let that go. And as you do, then your mind will become more peaceful and more joyful. But as long as there's craving and holding on to others, then the mind can't get to that peace and joy because the mind's holding on to these other beings, wanting them to do the same things you're doing. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. It does not appear that there are any other questions at this time. Okay. Well, thank you all for joining for today's class, coming together to encourage, support, and motivate each other in our meditation practice. It's wonderful to be with you guys and do meditation. This weekend is New Year's, so we're still having classes throughout the New Year's weekend. On the 31st, which is New Year's Eve, we're doing the Pali Canon and English Study Group. We're in volume 13, so you're welcome to join for that class. And then on Sunday, I'm not doing any kind of talk on any teachings because it's New Year's Day. I thought what I would do is just come together and do meditation with those of you guys that would like to log in and do meditation together on January 1st at the same time as normal. And then that following Wednesday, a week from today, we're also going to be doing meditation together, breathing mindfulness meditation, because then that Sunday, which is a week and a half from now, we're going to be restarting the group learning program from there. And then on the 28th of January, we're going to be restarting the Pali Canon and English study group. So over this New Year's weekend, we're just doing meditation together with some Pali Canon and English study group on Saturday. So thank you all for joining. Have a very lovely and wonderful rest of your day. We'll see you guys in one of these future classes. Take care. Sawadee Thank you for listening to this podcast. To provide support for this podcast, visit patreon.com forward slash support Buddha. To access more teachings, visit buddhadailywisdom.com. There, you will discover a full range of courses, retreats, and online resources to assist you on the path to enlightenment. Remember to establish a daily, consistent meditation practice, along with learning and practicing these teachings. A well-developed meditation practice is the foundation in which to train the mind to attain enlightenment.